Embracing change isn't just about altering your routines. It's really about reinventing yourself, especially if you're 50 or older. After all, turning 50 is a huge milestone in life. You know, as this new year unfolds, it's not just about adding another year. It's really about transforming our lives with some purpose and vigor so that we have the most amazing year ever. You know, missing this chance to redefine ourselves could mean overlooking an opportunity to experience our most enriching and vibrant years yet. So, what are you going to do differently in 2024? I'm sure you're thinking about it. If you watched our video a couple days ago where we talked about our planning process, we talked about the 10 items that are really important to us, but you might have your own. Almost everyone does. So we want you to choose one of these seven tips to really pick and commit to make that change today. Remember, these tips are more than just advice. They're stepping stones to a more vibrant, fulfilling, and enriched life as we journey on into the new year and beyond. And a lot of people say, why, why do I need to plan? Can't I just wait a bit? I'm really busy and thinking about change stresses me out. Get that. But there's really no time like the present. So let's really dig in here today. We all have uh, with this one life and that's it. Life will continue to fly by. We have, we have been retired for five years and this is the time to set ourselves up for change. Right. We have to really bite into this as well. We will. So if you're new here, I'm Mark and this is my wife, Jody. And we don't focus on the financial aspects of retirement, but rather lifestyle, health, relationships, and more. So do us a favor, please hit the subscribe button, but also share this video with someone that you care about who's on the same journey that you are as well. Now we have some downloads. There's a, there's a link below that we've put our relationship checklist. I think it is. I think is. it is called that. Yep. Yeah. To, to actually go through and check the relationship that you have. I think it's with your spouse or partner and it's a really good, um, checklist to, to download and go through. So please take advantage of that in the link below. Okay. So let's start. Number one, we have to start with physical fitness. This is a real foundation for renewal. You know, physical health is paramount as we age and acting as a catalyst for overall well-being is your physical health. So if there's one thing that we would say that we agree on, that's the most important thing when you retire is physical fitness. Absolutely without a doubt, this needs to be core to what it is you do every day. And we're doing okay in it. You know, we... We've, we've evolved in what's important to us, but now I'm 66 and I'm realizing I'm losing muscle. You actually start losing muscle at the age, I think of 30. 30 yeah, I think it was. Your body 30. starts losing muscle. So I've been doing some workouts, but now I've had to step it up because I'm realizing everything's getting a little bit smaller. And, you know, I don't want to be the person with the oversized jacket that kind of looks like I shrunk because we are shrinking. Right. So we've doubled down on our exercise now. We've joined a new gym. Yep. And it's a CrossFit gym? Well, it's a boot camp. A boot camp. A boot camp gym. So we're working really hard on that for ourselves. But I think what's really important under physical fitness is there's a couple of key categories that we should talk about. One that you just mentioned, regular exercise, right? right. Tailoring, or, tailoring a routine that really suits your abilities as well as your interests. So you're pumped to go. Right? right. The second thing would be a balanced diet, you know, focusing on nutritious foods that energize and heal, not just shoveling in the pizza every day. Although today on a cold, rainy day in Marco, pizza sounds kind of good. And the other, a couple other things underneath physical health is adequate sleep. That's so important to get right. seven hours or more of good quality sleep. You've been struggling with that. Right? I am, and I'm going to get that checked out. We're going to do some sleep tests for me. Um, getting regular checkups with your doctors and doing anything you can to reduce the stress in your life. Right. All of that is really important. So if this is an area that you want to focus on in 2024, it's a great idea, a good place to start. Absolutely. The second big bucket is mental sharpness, really keeping your mind agile. Mental agility contributes to a more engaged and fulfilling life, just some total, like full stop, right? Yeah. So we're, we're both believers in what we call a lifelong learning. So we are actually learning more now, reading more books now, really reaching out to learn about, I don't know, whether it's history or hobbies or education or relationships, whatever it might be. 
that's really important and that's going to keep your brain sharp. Absolutely. Right? The next thing under this category would be any brain exercises, things that challenge your brain with puzzles or problem problem solving activities. I do that every day. I know you kind of laugh when I'm doing Wordle or Spelling Bee or Connections. And, you know, I'm all interested in trying to keep my brain very active in the abstract. And I I dig in on the analytics of our YouTube channel and learning new ways to do certain things. That keeps my brain sharp. I watch a lot of videos on how to do that. So that's my way. I am terrible at word games. But we recently started playing cards with Oh, we did with, with our neighbors, which is my, kind of fun, which, which leads which, to the next one. Social interaction. Which, so. you know, under your mental agility, social interaction and being engaged in community activities that help stimulate your mind is very important. Yep. Yeah. And another thing under this category is limiting your screen time. Mm, I called you out on that the other night. You did? Yeah. You were in bed scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, and I was like, that's not going to help you sleep. That wasn't really nice of me to do that. It wasn't really nice of you to do that. (laughs) Limiting. It's not nice of you to to call me out uh, with all of our friends watching. Well, because people do that. I know they do. And limiting. And do I do it every night? You don't. I was sick. Don't forget. I've been sick. So limiting your screen time, particularly two hours before you go to bed, is important or when you get up in the morning the first thing to do to open your phone and just scroll for an hour not a good idea right it's just not good for your brain and then the whole idea of mindfulness you know i'm a huge meditator and you are as well and it really helps again reduce the stress keep the mind clear and uh, that that's something to think about for 2024 as well for you guys The third bucket, big bucket, would be nurturing your relationships. You know, the heart of a fulfilling life is relationships. Meaningful relationships provide support and joy and a sense of belonging to all of us. And And, that's really And there's... What's that? And there's... (laughs) there's, Trying not to cough. I know. We're both so sick. (coughs) And... um, Sorry. um, There's so many fun areas in this. So you're starting off a new year. How about reconnecting with old friends? Just find some old friends in your phone. Scroll through your phone. Look at Facebook. Who's some people that you haven't talked to in a long time? Or or strengthen bonds with existing friends. Or even open to new relationships, new friends, new groups. You know, really investing in your community, participating in local events and clubs, and just really spreading your outreach this year so that you can have enhanced relationships. Reach out to family. Uh, Work on your communication skills. We work on that with each other all the time. Mm -hmm. Becoming a better listener. You know, if you want to nurture a relationship, learn how to listen. Right. So that's really important. All right. So one of the things that's interesting as we get older is some people back off of technology. We're, We're kind of double downing on it a little bit. Really trying to learn and embrace technology because staying connected in digital world is really important. Our grandkids, I mean, they, they use their parents' phones now. They know how to take pictures and text. It's, a, it's crazy. It is. But technology is a tool for staying both informed and connected as well as engaged. And it's really important to learn or enhance your digital skills as you age because there are a lot of on, online communities or forums or groups or even telehealth is now digital and online in a lot of locations. All of those things are really important to stay ahead of the curve on your digital literacy. Plus, the other thing is, I think that we're going to find down the road that without a phone, without technology, without Wi-Fi in your house, some things won't work. We're looking for a new stove for our house here. There's there's um, three or four of the ovens that we went to look at. Some of the options on the oven only work through your phone. They don't work off yeah. the dashboard. That was interesting. The knobs. So if you can't really work a Wi-Fi mm, phone right. with an app, you can't turn the oven on. Right. That, that's an exaggeration. You can't turn the oven on. But with the phone, you can do some other things. Like this one oven, you can use it as an air fryer, which is new. Yes, I saw but that. But that has to be on your phone. Yeah. So I think staying connected really, really is important. And honestly, social media is not a bad place to see, find people like us, other inspirational people to help you through this phase of life. Okay, so the fifth category is really around your financial wisdom, planning for your peace of mind. Financial security and planning are crucial for stress-free retirement years. We don't do that, but we regularly review our budgets, we adjust our budgets, we uh, we assess and align any investments with our goals. 
we have a financial planner that helps keep us on track with all of that. So maybe this is the year that you want to clean that up. Yeah. Maybe you really want to get a handle on your finances. We actually will put a link below to um, New Retirement. New Retirement, yeah. which is a platform. I think it's uh, it's you can get it for free for a while, and then it's one hundred and twenty dollars a year, and it's actually a dashboard of all your financial information. Your That's kind of cool. Banking accounts, your checking, your savings, your four hundred one k, whatever, and in there you can actually do a bunch of what ifs as well to experiment. So. Take a look at that and see if that's something that might help. Um, the sixth category that you might want to think about for this year, and we spent a lot of time on that in the last video, is spiritual growth. We, I, we feel, for us anyway, as we're getting older, we're finding more deep meaning in spirituality and finding some peace. It's really important to explore this, to really understand what it is. What happens to us after we leave? I mean, what happens when we die? So I think that this is an area that you might want to start thinking about. We're having a lot of fun with it. So this is a whole new area for us to dig in. And it's giving us some connection with a new community as well. And I think it's really important to be open to exploring different spiritual paths. You know, it actually helps you with your reflection and your gratitude. You know, reflecting on life and expressing your gratitude through exploring your faith and spirituality. It's, it's been interesting for us. It's unlocked right. a lot of fun. The seventh big broad category is personal style, expressing your true self. You know, personal style is a form of self-expression and it can boost your confidence. You know, maybe refresh your wardrobe, you know, update it, reflect your current self, not trying to piece together what you used to wear at work to make it work for your retirement life. A few pieces here or there. You know, grooming, you know, maintaining a good grooming routine. You know, you never want to be the old person that has hair grown out of all the wrong places, right? Like in your ears? Come on. <laughs> um, you know, but really um, getting a routine that makes you feel good about how you look and how you express yourself. And I think also another place that you can make some changes that will um, enhance your life this year is your home environment. We did a whole bunch of videos on downsizing, decluttering, things like that. Build a living space that reflects your personality now. If, you're, if you've recently retired, you know, you don't need the clutter of all the home office stuff from work. Really take a couple of your rooms and make them a comfortable room. We just talked about that yesterday. We did. Having a room that's like a den. I, you know, we, haven't had, we don't have a den here in Florida, mm. but we have one in Connecticut. But creating some home environment that's comfortable. And Cozy space. Where you can relax. Um, maybe try some artistic expression. Maybe you want to get into painting this year. And, you know, the other thing um, about uh, this is like body language. Are you starting to sort of become the crouched over, bent over, feel sorry for yourself kind of person? Or are you embracing a posture and demeanor that expresses confidence and openness? So that's another thing you can think about for this coming year. I'm sure for you, many parts of your life are great and maybe other parts are okay. But what about the parts you want to make a change in and a change for the better in 2024? And we feel the same way. Some parts of our life are great, some aren't. But every year we pick a few changes to make so that we become better versions of ourselves. Now, this next video, three major life changes three years into retirement. In this video, we talk about health, relationships, and more. And it's a really good one to watch next.